Hello everyone! Welcome to Space at Ibapa. Here in this vlog, we will feature everything you want to know, learn, and understand about astronomy, space science, and the universe. I am your Pinoy space guy, Dr. Rogel Marie Sese. I'm a Filipino astrophysicist and space scientist based here at the Ateneo de Davao University in the beautiful island of Mindanao. For the past 20 years, I have been working in the field of astronomy and space science, from studying star formation to doing astronomy education and outreach to pushing for our own Philippine space program so that others may benefit from space technology. I hope you will join me in this journey of discovery as we learn and understand more about our planet Earth and the universe around us. So let's get ready to blast off as we start our journey to the stars. For this episode of Space at Ibapa, let's talk about one of the most exciting astronomical phenomena we can witness here on Earth, and that is a solar eclipse. Since ancient times, a solar eclipse has always sparked wonder and amazement, and in some cases, even fear. But as time progressed and our understanding of the astronomy has improved, we learned that there is really nothing to fear about a solar eclipse. So what is a solar eclipse? As our moon revolves around our planet and our planet revolves around the sun, there are instances wherein the sun, moon, and earth are all in a straight line. A solar eclipse happens when the moon is passes directly in front of the sun as seen from here on earth. When this happens, the moon blocks the light coming from the sun either partially or completely, making it suddenly turn dark. A solar eclipse can happen only during daytime and when the moon is in the new moon phase in its cycle. During a solar eclipse, the moon casts two shadows onto the Earth. The first shadow cast by the moon is called the penumbra. The penumbra covers a large area of the Earth's surface. Inside the penumbra, the moon only partially blocks the sun, resulting to what we call a partial solar eclipse. The second shadow is called the umbra. The umbra covers a much smaller area of the Earth's surface, and when within the umbra, the sun is completely blocked by the moon, resulting to a total solar eclipse. This happens only on a small track of the Earth's surface known as the Path of Totality. Inside the Path of Totality, we get to see the sun becoming completely covered by the moon, resulting to the ring-like effect. A total solar eclipse can last anywhere from few tens of seconds to several minutes. During the brief moment that the sun begins to emerge from behind the moon, we get to see the famous diamond ring effect. One special case of a total solar eclipse is when the moon appears to be smaller. Normally, the sun and moon would have the same apparent size as when seen from Earth. However, due to the varying distance of the moon from the Earth, it can sometimes appear to be smaller. When an eclipse happens at this time, the moon is not big enough to cover the sun, resulting to, it, to a donut ring-like effect known as the annular eclipse. This coming June 21, 2020, an annular solar eclipse will be visible in most part of Asia. However, here in the Philippines, we get only get to see a partial solar eclipse. So make sure you don't get to miss this amazing and spectacular astronomical event. Now you might be asking, can the reverse happen? Can the Earth block out the Sun and cast a shadow on the Moon? The answer, of course, is yes. As the Moon orbits around the Earth, our planets sometimes get directly between the Sun and the Moon. When this happens, the Earth casts a shadow on the Moon as it blocks the sunlight, resulting to what we call a lunar eclipse. Unlike a solar eclipse wherein the Sun turns dark, a lunar eclipse results to the Moon becoming dark red in color. Lunar eclipses can only happen at night and during a full Moon. While not as awe-inspiring as a solar eclipse, it is still nonetheless a sight to behold. Now there's one question that some people ask. Does an eclipse cause bad luck? It might sound strange, but did you know that in ancient times, a solar eclipse caused a lot of fear? People thought that a dragon was swallowing the sun, so to prevent it from happening, they make a lot of noise to scare the dragon away. Nowadays, we understand how an eclipse happened, so we know that there's nothing to be afraid of. Eclipses are natural astronomical phenomena that regularly occurs. In fact, astronomers have been long been able to predict when an eclipse will happen. One thing we always have to remember is to be careful when viewing a solar eclipse. The sun is the brightest object in the sky, and prolonged staring at the sun can cause significant eye damage and even blindness. Whatever you do, never look at the sun directly without proper viewing equipment. 
This can burn your eyes, just like how a magnifying glass can burn paper or leaf. There are several ways of viewing a solar eclipse in a safe manner. The most recommended is through the use of special purpose solar filters, such as this one. The film in this filter transmits only a very small fraction of the sun's light. However, make sure that there are no tears or creases in the film. Do not use smoke glass or welder's glass as these do not provide enough protection that may cause eye damage. The second one is through the use of projection method. If you have a telescope or binoculars, you can project the image onto a piece of cardboard or paper. This is great for groups wherein everyone can view it at the same time. Again, never look at the sun through a camera, binoculars, or telescope without a proper solar filter. The third method is through the use of a pinhole projector or camera. This is a safe and indirect method of viewing the eclipse. A pinhole camera is very easy to make using ordinary household materials and costs next to nothing. Now let's try to make our own pinhole camera. So let's try to make a pinhole projector. What are we going to need? First, we need a box. It can be a used shoe box or any box that is small enough that you can use it easily. Second, you need to have some bond paper or white paper, some aluminum foil, a cutter, a pair of scissors, some scotch tape, and some toothpicks. First step is you have to put inside the box some white paper. This will be your projection screen. So first, you need to cut your paper and make sure it fits well inside the box. So once you have placed it in the box, fasten it securely using some scotch tape. Once the projection screen is fixed on one side of, or one end of the box, let's now try to make your uh, pinhole. To make a pinhole, on the other end or on the opposite end of your projection screen, you have to cut out two square holes. Okay? On the left side, this will be your viewing hole. Okay? And on the other side, you have to make a similar size of hole. Okay. Let's try to do that carefully. So make sure you have to be very careful when cutting your shoe box. Okay. Now once that's done, we have to do it the same for the other side. So you can do this with any kind of box. So just make sure that it's small enough uh, that you can easily handle it. So there we have it. We have two holes now on once on the other side of, or the other end of the box. Now, the one on the left or on the right, it can, either, it can either be one. This will be your viewing hole. So this is where you're going to look in through your pinhole projector. The other side is where you're going to make your pinhole, okay? So when making your pinhole, you have to get your aluminum foil, okay? Then make sure to cut it in a size that is slightly larger than the hole that you made in the box. Tape it now onto the other end of your box or on one of the holes so make sure you get your scotch tape and fasten it securely on your pinhole projector now once everything is set all you need to do now is to make the pinhole how do you make the pinhole so you take your toothpick and very carefully try to pierce the middle of your aluminum foil, okay? You have to be very careful because if you make a mistake in this part, you have to repeat or replace the aluminum foil in this section. So this is now your pinhole projector. You have your viewing uh, port, you have your pinhole, and you have your projection screen at uh, in the inside of your box. To view a solar eclipse using a pinhole projector, your back should be facing towards the sun. So this is a very safe way of viewing the solar eclipse without causing any eye damage. So there you have it, your very own pinhole projector for viewing a solar eclipse. 
I hope you were able to learn a lot about our sun and moon and how their movements results into eclipses. Be sure to catch the upcoming solar eclipse this June 21, 2020. We'll be streaming the solar eclipse on the link shown below, so be sure to join us and witness this rare and awesome astronomical phenomenon. So that ends our vlog for today. Tune in for more exciting ed educational episodes of Space Atibapa. This is your Pinoy Space Guy, Dr. Rohel Marie Sese, and always remember to keep reaching for the stars.